All right, so all kinds of things happened over this weekend with regards to a potential TikTok ban. So first of all, we heard from the president that he may ban TikTok as early as this weekend or this week. Then we learned that Microsoft was very close to a deal to potentially acquire TikTok. Then we heard they were pausing those negotiations to get clarity from the White House, whether that would satisfy their concern. Now we are back, Rachel, to the idea that Microsoft is very close to, the, to a deal. And uh, Reuters is reporting this morning that they've been giving, given a 45-day window in order to close that sale. So um, your thoughts on all of this so far? Well, I think this is a good first step, right? I think it also makes me laugh that TikTok has spent the last several months hiring up all of congressional former leadership staffers to prevent exactly this from happening. Yeah. <laughs> and right. here we are. But look, the goal is to get TikTok out of the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. That is the goal. In America, you are free to use any app you want. You are not free to be an asset of the Chinese Communist Party. And that is what's at stake here, is, is the, all of the data that China is gathering on American kids. And it's not just what they're doing on the app. It's what they're doing on their phones. There's a lawsuit pending out of California from a user who downloaded TikTok but never set up an account and found that an account had been created for her with videos, uh, uh, profiles that she had never actually posted, you know, all kinds of data taken in from this. And again, U.S. tech companies do this too. Right. But the issue is they're not handing it over to China to be used against United States citizens or the United States in, an, in the effect, event of a national security crisis. Right. Well, here's where this story is complicated for me, because I am very uh, open to the security. I think they're real, right? And the censorship concerns are also real. We've seen actual documented instances of where criticism of the Chinese Communist Party or their stances vis-a-vis -vis Hong Kong and other things have been right. actually sent. Like, those are real things. And by the way, I also have real data privacy concerns when it comes to Facebook and Twitter and Google and they all, all do these it. other behemoths <laughs> as well. And it's only like marginally better to me when they're vacuuming up my data versus when the Chinese Communist Party is potentially vacuuming up the same data. But like... First of all, why is this suddenly an emergency now when, look, on Friday, unemployment benefits expired for 30 million Americans. We're in the midst of a pandemic. You know, July saw something 40 percent plus of the coronavirus cases in the country occurred in July. People are afraid to send their kids to school. Schools aren't reopening. We have all these massive issues. And so it seems like a very blatant political attempt to distract on the one hand. And then on the other hand, the other piece here is like, do I really feel that much better about Microsoft getting even bigger? We just had these antitrust hearings here last week, which were encouraging in certain ways, not that I think any real action is going to come out of them in the near term, but now we're supposed to be cheering for Microsoft to grow their power and their ability to vacuum up this data. And it almost seems like with the pressure and this 45 day window that the government is now putting on them for a sale, it's sort of like a corporate giveaway. I mean, you're you're forcing them into this, you know, super short time frame and putting all this pressure on TikTok to sell to Microsoft. I'm sure that's a massive benefit for Microsoft in these negotiations as well. I think the point about Microsoft is well taken because I'm also not sure or convinced yet that it solves the problem. Yeah. Right? Because all of these US, US tech giants have entanglements with China. All of them. Right. And, and Microsoft included. Now, maybe they're marginally better on privacy, but I don't have the reassurance that the problem that we have with TikTok, which is, again, this sort of entanglement with China, we know the data is flowing directly there, is going to be solved with this Microsoft acquisition. I think it's an attempt to sort of prevent an outright ban right. of, the, of the app, which I appreciate. But again, if it's not solving the problem, then all it's doing, to your point, is just concentrating power in yet another you know, corporate tech giant. So I think that's something that has to be answered clearly by both Microsoft and the White House. You know, I, I do think I'm sympathetic to the, to the point that we have a lot going on in this country, and this maybe shouldn't be of concern. But I do think we have to expect from our White House the ability to do two things at once. They're not always quite competent in They're that. They're not doing it, but yes. But I think that there is also a concern from people who are worried about TikTok, you know, that the CFIUS and antitrust concerns, they, you know, all TikTok has to do is hang on until a future Biden administration, and then they can get those clearances, and we don't have to worry about this anymore. So I'm not unhappy that Trump is 
trying to, or the administration is trying to stand in front of that effort and try to wrap it up now, because I'm not convinced that the Biden administration or, or people who staff it would do the same. Yeah. I mean, it feels blatantly political. And certainly the, the TikTokers, the Gen Z TikTokers in particular, feel like this is in direct response to them, like screwing up his rally and other things that they've done, messing with his campaign merchandising and the activism that is occurring on the platform. But I actually thought this um, letter that was published from the TikTok creator community on Medium had one of the best and most thoughtful takes. They essentially say, look, the, the internet that we grew up with and came of age as teenagers like, is not the place, the open, free internet of the past. Freedom of information was sacrificed in favor of corporate monopoly. And they basically made the point that I did that selling this to Microsoft only makes that problem worse. So what they propose is spinning TikTok off in a US IPO, which to me seems like a decent solution, but that will take more time than President Trump has suddenly decided to allow for that to unfold. And just to read that final quote that we had back up on the screen, if we can throw that up, they say, our generation has grown up on the internet, but our vision of the internet is going to require more than two gatekeepers, referring to the size of these social media giants. Why not use this as an opportunity to level the playing field, remove the app from the CCP's control while allowing it to remain a bastion of community in a world where we find ourselves so isolated? I actually thought this was one of the most thoughtful responses, like nuanced responses that I had seen on the issue. Yeah, and it's right, because we do have a gatekeeper problem in the tech community. It's one Congress is trying to get in front of you know, with the antitrust issue. And, you know, I'm sort of agnostic as to how we solve the problem. Yeah. Right? I think that there are as many solutions, let a thousand flowers bloom. This is one of them, but it has to solve the issue. And I'm not confident yet in what that solution is, because right now it cannot be tied to ByteDance in any form. Yeah. Right? Software, data storage, all those things matter. And we just don't have enough transparency on any of these issues, I think, to know which is the best solution. So I have a 12-year-old daughter, and she's not allowed to post content on video, on TikTok, like her own videos, but she is allowed to like consume other people's videos on TikTok. And the thing that she said to me, which I'm curious your take on, is basically like, with this issue, you are motivating a whole lot of like 17, almost 18 year olds and 18 year olds and 19 year olds to actually go and vote. Whereas they may have before, eh, they didn't like Trump, but they may not be actually motivated to get to the polls. She was like, no, no, now people are actually gonna vote. So there is like a political angle of this as well, where it feels like, whether this is the real concern or not, it very much feels like retribution for the you know more left-leaning and activism and support for Black Lives Matter that has happened on the platform, they are taking it that way and interpreting that way, and it could actually be a motivator in terms of getting young people to vote. Yeah, that's true. You know, and I think the administration is probably thinking about that. Yeah. But I will say they're not the only ones taking an aggressive stand against TikTok. The Biden campaign does not allow its campaign staff to use TikTok. You know, it's banned on U.S. military bases. Um, Amazon got into it recently when they said their employees were not going to be allowed to use TikTok. So it's not just the Trump administration that's recognizing the concern. I would love Schumer to was out with comments, too. Correct. He's supportive of CFIUS Review. I would love to keep it available to, to teens and tweens and everyone. We got to do it safely. All right. We'll have more rising for you after this.